Around three months ago, I took Ali Abdul's part-time YouTube Academy course as a complete beginner. Here's my seven biggest takeaways that for review coming next week. Number one, your first 100 videos are gonna be awful. Embrace it and enjoy the learning process. As a complete beginner in this space, thinking that your videos are gonna be amazing from the get-go, like your first video, maybe even your fifth, or maybe even 25th, is just complete nonsense. Just look at any of the biggest creators, people like Ali Abdul, Matt Diavella, MKBHD, like their first videos were not great. It's through the process of actually making videos, that's where you actually get good. Another thing is think about people actually care about your videos or even watch them. No one will care and no one will really watch your videos. Take me as an example. I was afraid to upload on YouTube for over six years, which is just nuts. I didn't realize what was gonna happen. Like, did I think someone's gonna jump out of the camera and just slap me, just laugh at me because my videos are so terrible? No, nothing happened. <laughs> so stop attempting to be perfect from the get-go. It's about putting the reps in, just uploading, and for the process of making videos, you make mistakes and you slowly get better over time. And even talks about how if you just make one video per week for the next two years, your life will change. I have another one year and eight months to that point. So if my life doesn't change by that point, Ali, I'm asking for all my money back. And this whole notion of if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. So it's good that there is this kind of barrier to entry there's this kind of resiliency period where you just upload the videos when no one's gonna watch it like okay this leads me on to the second point their levels to make YouTube videos I thought about this and it's kind of the untold truth that uh, kind of Ali verbalized in the course okay at the start you're literally just making one video it doesn't really matter what the video is it doesn't really matter the production quality literally just you sitting down and just hitting the record button making something doing a really shitty edit and then uploading it next step two is consistently making one video per week this is the step where i'm at and after you're comfortable with this now you focus on making one good video per week and the next stage is the accelerated growth period now you focus on making really world-class videos and not really sticking to the schedule okay at the start of making youtube videos literally just focus on putting the reps in and just doing the thing. Focus on the quantity rather than the quality. There's a bunch of fundamental skills you get better at when you put the reps in. So things like speaking to a camera because at the moment this, this even now still feels a bit uncomfortable when I do this. And then things like understanding the equipment and understanding the setup and realizing that you probably should record horizontally instead of vertically, that, that's also another thing. Okay, in this kind of paradigm, in this kind of stage one to stage two, this is what Ali had to say. Stop trying to make the videos which you're proud of. Instead, be proud that you made the video. I think Ali adopted this from his writing coach or something along those lines. And so after making videos for around one to two years, uh, you slowly get better. This whole kind of notion of just 1% improvement, like these marginal gains, which slowly compound over time. Okay, being 1% better is kind of difficult to quantify. Just simply look at the video just uploaded, kind of reflect on it, figure out what went well, what hasn't done so well, and then what you can do next time to kind of improve it. Uh, at the beginning, it's just as simple as, okay, cool, let me think about this transition, or let me think about maybe adding some B-roll, or maybe just adding like the quotation marks, something along those lines. And then as you get comfortable with the base, this will come literally just subconsciously to you, and then you can focus on the other parts, maybe like focusing on just the hook, maybe focusing on your storytelling abilities and focusing more on the thumbnail and the title and kind of stuff like that. And then coming back to a point, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. And you kind of, you can't expect to be perfect from the start. And it's through the process of actually putting the reps in and slowly, slowly getting better, you actually get really good. And this is kind of saying that majority of people simply don't succeed because we don't stay in the game for long enough and experience this compounding growth. Okay, this leads me on to the next point. Okay, point number three, compounding results and memory decay. Okay, as we have this graph here, as you make videos, the progress is very slow, especially right at the very beginning, but when you stick to it and slowly just simply improve every video, just simply by 1%, the compounding starts to take place. And after hitting this critical point, things to begin to change exponentially and everything starts to move a lot quicker. At the start, it's literally just one big struggle after big struggle. It's literally just heavy lift after heavy lift. There's an incredible amount of resistance from learning how to speak to a camera, learning how to edit, making thumbnails, or even realizing that you have to make a thumbnail, doing all these different systems which you haven't even thought of before, or simply just getting over the fear of putting yourself out there to on the internet. Meanwhile, putting around 10 hours per video and experiencing like five, maybe to 10 views at a time. As you stick to it, you kind of, your brain will adapt to all these different learning points and a lot of these things will become automatic. Improve, you systemize things. Speaking to a camera literally just becomes like second nature to you. Literally becomes like speaking to a friend. Yeah, I should probably get some more friends to be honest. And then you slowly start to forget 
like the pain and resistance of what it, what it took to actually make your first videos. This pain and resistance exponentially reduces and everything becomes so easy up to a point where you actually forget how difficult it was right at the very start. This is why it's important to have this white belt mentality. What I'm trying to do is every year there's something completely different, there's something new, just to always experience this kind of humbling pain and discomfort of starting something completely new. Yeah, it's very unfortunate, but a lot of people quit before actually hitting this critical mass, this critical point where you start to experience this quick change, this compounding result. Point number four, be a guide, not a guru. This whole notion of how a guide is a lot more relatable than a guru. A guide is literally somebody who's like five, six steps in front of you and kind of reflecting back on that journey of kind of starting out and can give you a lot more practical advice than a guru would. Here's an example. It's a lot easier to learn a guitar for somebody who only started out about six months ago than somebody who started out around six years ago. Guru kind of forgets what it was like to be a beginner. And it's just a lot easier to learn from a friend, somebody just a couple of steps in front of you. It feels a lot more relatable, a lot more achievable uh, than <laughs> like a guru because we, yeah, we've seen all these gurus like, I'm here in my garage, Dan Locke, Tay Lopez and kind of like individuals like that. This is like another thing what kind of prevents me from starting YouTube. I felt it had to be naturally incredibly good at something for me to actually share it online. But in reality, it's just not the case. Next thing, point number five, original ideas are not a thing. Here's what Ali's writing teacher had to say. So there's nothing new under the sun. We're all trying to sell the same sunlight. It just depends what lens you see the sunlight through. As long as you say the message in your own voice, this itself is originality. And here's, here's another quote. So there's no unique messages, but unique messengers. And this, how, this kind of notion, it, your message and your point and your mission will take time to develop. It's something David Prell talks about. So you start off by copying other people's styles. You maybe select one or two or three people and you more or less blatantly copy their style. And it's through the process of you failing to copy their style. This is where your own voice, your own style kind of comes in. And to add another quote, good artists copy and great artists steal, and that's Picasso. <laughs> Point number six, batching makes everything 10 times easier. Creating system will reduce your friction and speed up your video production process. One of the ways this could be done is through treating the creation of YouTube videos as a slow burn instead of a heavy lift. Okay, let's identify different components of making each video. So first we have idea generation, then we have the script, then we have filming, and then we have editing. So in terms of idea generations, so you wanna have some form of idea capturing system. For a start, you can literally just go on your phone and open the note-taking app of your choice. Uh, just write down just simple ideas. And then you can obviously get a bit more advanced with it, like having your own notion system, which is what I have. And then I might actually make a video about this in the future. As soon as ideas actually arise, you wanna literally just capture them and just write them down. And as your ideas unfold, write them down and expand on them whenever you feel like, really. So I don't mean like having a 500 or like 10,000 word essay. I literally mean just kind of like coming up with just a bunch of bullet points. And if you want to expand those bullet points, yeah, just go for it. And then the next thing is filming. You have a bunch of scripts ready, like two or three scripts. Like at the moment, I'm going to be filming around two or three videos batch the filming process together. This will save so much time. It takes around 30 minutes for you to set up all the equipment, for you to warm up and get a bit more comfortable speaking to a camera, and then for you to take all the stuff down. If you're only recording for like half an hour, that means 50% of your time is literally there to set up and to take everything down. And what you can do instead is put a bunch of scripts together and then one sitting record the three, four videos. And now editing, so one of the ways is just smoothing out and streamline your editing process and the other, the probably the better aspect of it is actually just get an editor because editing takes like what I know between two, maybe five hours, maybe even 10 hours. So if you kind of like fast forward that process and just firstly take the time to uh, coach an editor of the kind of editing style and just give it off to them. So when it comes to making one video, editing takes about 56% of the time. So it becomes literally the bottleneck of the whole process. So if you can outsource it to someone else, that will free up so much of your time, which can be used in other things. For the final point, if you're interested to know more about part-time YouTube Academy course, I'll actually link it down in the description below. It might be so you want to make the whole process frictionless. Obviously, I could mention other stuff such as the high framework, the science behind thumbnails and titles which you have to like optimize. But as a beginner, I think the biggest problem and the biggest bottleneck is actually you sitting down and pressing record and overcoming this friction. So friction is the most powerful force in the universe. When things are easy, they're more likely to get done.
there are two types of friction. Okay, there's the environmental friction and there's the emotional friction. Environmental friction could be like, oh, my light is too far away. It could be my camera's broken or it takes forever for me to actually set up. What a laptop I use is just incredibly slow. And then emotional friction is kind of having imposter syndrome, being just perfectionist. So to minimize the environmental friction, this could be instead of you resting your phone on some books, you get a proper tripod with like a hot shoe attachment so you can attach the microphone to that. Or it could be again a bare laptop so that you can edit a bit more efficiently like what I did. And then again, scheduling batching, just having batching in place, it just makes things just so much more easier. And if you have an editor, again, you can just send off your three, four videos and then just come back. Emotional friction and kind of reframing your beliefs that understanding that the first 100 videos are gonna be awful. Just embrace the journey, embrace the learning curve, and just literally just put the reps in, and after those 100 videos, you're gonna be exponentially better than where you started. Okay, for, from personal experience of being afraid to upload for over six years, 99% of the fear will literally dissipate as soon as you upload the first video and realize that no one really cares. Yeah, okay, just to clarify, the niche doesn't matter, neither does the equipment, nothing matters. Just sit down, fucking press record. And then having a kind of, group of people where, who are in the same boat is also incredibly useful. This is another reason why this course is just so good, just kind of like the community aspect of it. You have someone to kind of keep accountable to, make sure that the videos get done. And secondly, maybe you can have, you can set up meetings where both of you literally have like a power hour where you script the videos or maybe come up with video ideas or maybe just record videos together, like whatever, whatever it takes really. You can have an agreement with somebody. If you don't upload a video every week, then you have to give like a hundred euros or like a hundred dollars. For me, if I had to give a hundred pounds away, if I didn't upload the video, this will be significant amount of pain for me to just upload the video instead. Okay guys, thank you much for watching the video. I'll see you again next week, bye.